Okay, so after we talk about the period of a wave, um, I like to talk about this concept of delta x. Okay, delta. If you're uh, if you've been in a science class before, maybe your science teachers have used this. Uh, that's the change in. Okay, the difference between uh, two measurements. So delta x is the change in x, uh, and we use this to again when you're looking at a graph. All right, there's symmetry and there's patterns, all right? And then there's predictability, okay, in these periodic functions, right? All right, think about, when you think about periodic function, okay, a, a periodic function, think temp and time, okay? In other words, throughout the day, typically coldest, right? In the middle of the night, as the day gets, as the day goes on, you typically reach your, your, uh, your high value sometime around noon or in the afternoon. And then as the sun sets, it gets colder and so on and so forth. So there's predictability in these graphs. And the change in X or delta X is one of these uh, characteristics of these waves that I like to introduce. It may not show up in the homework. It's just one of these things that's going to make us uh, have a little bit more uh, a deeper understanding of these things. And that is this. If you look at the period of a sine wave, okay, so from zero to two pi, in the middle of that is an intercept. So a sine wave starts at an intercept, in the middle of the period has an intercept, and at the end of the period has an intercept, okay? And then in between these two intercepts, or what we might call the first and third critical point, there's another midpoint here where the maximum occurs, okay? And then in between the end point of the period and the midpoint of the period, the midpoint of those midpoints, or endpoint and midpoint, I should say, is the minimum. And these are these are the sine waves that we're going to look at, sinusoidal waves in this predictability. So you're never going to see, at least in our class, you're never going to see a sine wave where the time, the quote unquote time, when I say time, the, the interval of X values, you're never going to see an interval from one critical point to the next be different than this. It's never going to be different. They're always going to be the same, okay? So what we have is the period, the entire period of the function cut, chopped into four intervals, okay? So you can see here, all right, that each of these four intervals uh, is the distance to the next critical point. This is what we call delta x, okay? The horizontal uh, interval from one critical point to the next, and that's constant, okay? Back in normal times, and maybe if you're watching this in 2021 or 2022 or beyond when we're back in the classroom and we may wanna do this by hand, we used to say that the change in X is the period cut into four pieces. And that would help us graph these by hand. Because as long as we knew where to start, right? As long as we know where to start the graph, and we know how far to go to get to the next point, okay? Then we could graph that next point. And if we knew it was a max, we'd put it up here and we'd put them in and an intercept. So understanding that a period can be broken into four intervals and there's some predictability in what you're gonna see with that, right? You get to a critical point at the end of each one of those intervals that we call delta X, okay? And when I say up here, think midpoint, 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 if you know where the period starts and you know where the period stops, find the midpoint. So there's midpoint, then find the midpoint here, then find the midpoint here, right? Midpoint, this midpoint here, and then this midpoint here, right? Midpoint, midpoint, midpoint. Then you'll know where the five critical points of any sine or cosine wave are. 